Bless God, right now, I would like to take a look at a verse in John 6. John 6 is a verse used by devils at times to speak about how Judas was always a devil. And that Judas was not actually a real apostle, but someone who never had salvation. And although this is not a universal teaching or something, it is taught by many on their way to the lake of fire. And it's not harmonious with anything else that is said of apostles chosen by Jesus. A few verses prior, we see one of the issues that arises when you aren't thinking is that you make the Son of God someone that came to destroy the Law and the Prophets. Whereas the Son of God says, I did not come to destroy the Law or the Prophets. Okay. So let's test the Son of God. If he did not come to destroy the prophets, we should expect that he lived the teachings of the prophets. How do we know this? Well, because that's what he said. And as well as in the simple fact that he was the one that was speaking to the prophets. If he didn't listen to what the prophets taught in the flesh then he is actually not listening to what he said. So he can't even follow his own word. Okay. And for the type of people that say, once you're saved, you're always saved. And that John 6 even improves this by saying Judas was always the devil. Look at the folly you're entering into from verse 66 of John 6. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Now, if you've ever thought about this, you're going to see that these disciples lost their salvation because they did not walk anymore with Jesus. Okay? And Jesus, in the context, he makes the statement, okay, about Judas, yes. But what else does it say? Okay? In the 64th verse. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. So, Jesus knows of those that, in this context, believe not in that the fact that they lost their salvation. And that Judas was a betrayer, not that he was always a betrayer, but that he would betray. So, this is referring to a foreknowledge. And if you understand foreknowledge, God is foreseeing your choice. Now, we don't have to base foreknowledge off of the 66th verse because we know that they at one time were disciples that walked with Jesus. But now after these sayings, they could not receive them. They walked no more with Jesus. How do we know they lost their salvation? Because if they were walking with Jesus and they were disciples and Jesus know that some of you believe not. Okay, well, who's he talking to? He's talking to his own disciples that walked with him. Now, in the prophets, it says in the book of Amos, chapter 3, let's see what it says. Okay, and think, could the Son of God really not follow this? Can two walk together, verse 3, except they be agreed? So now you think that there are these people that are called disciples who are walking with Jesus and that they're never saved, that Jesus is walking with people he does not even agree with. Now you have Jesus breaking the prophets. So they walked with Jesus as real disciples, saved them, believed not. The foresight was there. They lost salvation, and that's what John 6 is teaching. Judas was not always a betrayer. 
okay, for many reasons that have been discussed prior, but I would say there's more based on the subject at hand, okay. For example, if I go to the book of Psalms, Psalm 55, verse 14. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. Okay. Now, as I have probably, if I'm not mistaken, shown in the past, I believe Psalm 55 pertains to Judas. Okay. And this can happen. And it did happen. Okay. With or without Judas, we see in the 66th verse that they walked no more with him, which means they did before. It's written in the prophets. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? Jesus says, I did not come to destroy the prophets. So Jesus would not walk with false disciples. Okay. They lost salvation. He asked the 12, will you also go away? Okay. Not that you have to, but will you? How could he ask them that and then say, well, just so you know, Judas has never really been an apostle. And those that are walking no more with me, they don't actually understand anything. They've never been real disciples. This goes back to secret will, illogical reasoning, unstable people who, of course, will be in hellfire. You cannot believe these things and say you believe God. Part of believing God is believing the truth. It's insane, okay, to believe these things. You have to leave these teachings. It does not matter. You have to learn from God. If you have a problem explaining things to people... Right now, your bigger problem is the fact that God's angry with you. Fear God. Repent. Have faith in God. Learn from God. Okay? If you actually care about people, you're going to try to get them entangled from this web of nonsense they're in, believing things like once saved, always saved. It makes the ministry of Jesus an absolute fraud and incapable of rendering to something logical. It's incapable of being sincere and of understanding that Jesus literally named a false apostle. Okay. And again, the others that walk no more with him. Praise God.